You see these little bar graphs there. Now, what are we looking at? You see patient A through patient I. And you see a timeline starting at the year 2000 and to 2016, where you see the bar highly elevated at 2000 and virtually non-existent by the year 2016. Now before I proceed, this original report was released in 2017 and I had thought personally myself with the rise in drug resistance in regard to HIV treatment that something would have been further done in regard to this original investigation into what was called a traditional Chinese medicine. I know that triggers some bias, TCM treatment uh, in some individuals. However, there shouldn't be because the results were just incredible. What you're looking at there right there is basically patients which were part of a trial, all be the trial had limitations, there was no placebo, there was no control group, yet the results of all the individuals in that particular trial are right there to show you. They were infected with HIV in 2003, right there, and by 2016, I don't need to explain anymore. That were the results. Now this is really a medical mystery. You'll understand my why in a sec, but let me proceed with reading an abstract from basically some of the releases in regard to this one particular outcome. To move forward, traditional Chinese medicine and HIV cure, issue of AIDS research and human retroviruses, that is their title, not mine. A special issue on progress toward a cure for HIV includes a description of a previously unreported study started in the early 2000s that describe AIDS patients currently between the ages of 51 and 67 in good health. These nine individuals were treated with a unique formula of traditional Chinese herbal medicine from 2001 to 2006 or longer, with or without occasional antiviral therapy added later. The fact that the patients currently have, now we're talking year 2017, fast forward, the fact that the patients currently have low or undetectable HIV in their systems was an unexpected and intriguing. It suggests potential promise of TCM as a functional cure for HIV and AIDS. Reading from the abstract from 2017. Now I'm going to read through this next part kind of fast. To explain what happened, they had the formula in, this hand, in their hands. This company back in 2003 and so on and so forth but the company went bankrupt and stood a lot of information in regard to the treatment. However, still, something happened to require further research and they still have parts of that research on hand. But to proceed, the case series of the TCM was administered by a small Chinese company which bankrupted by the end of 2009. The enrolled patients who were poor peasants from an AIDS village in, I will not pronounce it appropriately, A-N-H-U-I province of China, contracted HIV-1 sometime between 1993 and 1995 through commercial plasma donations and were officially diagnosed, again, Kanzao, I'm not going to pronounce it appropriately, so please forgive me, Center for Disease Control and Prevention on December 19, 2002. At that time, there were at least 42 HIV-infected people in the same village, but few believed that the traditional Chinese medicine could effectively treat AIDS. Accordingly, only nine patients were willing to participate. The chart that we showed prior, those were the nine. Were willing to participate in the case series. By late 2001, all the nine randomly selected patients, all of the patients, randomly selected showed typical AIDS symptoms and after being infected by HIV for six to eight years, supplemented data which we looked at before, indicating that they are not long-term non-progressors. For treatment, patients A through D took the traditional Chinese medicine twice daily from 2001 to 2009, while patients E through I took the traditional Chinese medicine from 2001 or 2002 to 2006. And here comes the fascinating part. And then occasionally took some form of uh, ART, antiretroviral viral ther therapy, without TCM for 2007 to 2017. Just look, think of the outcome, not necessarily what intervine, intervenes in between. The supplement data showed. Interestingly, AIDS symptoms in all patients were improved after three months of traditional Chinese medicine treatment and almost disappeared 
after one year of the TCM treatment. The TCM treatment was well tolerated by all patients and displayed little clinical toxicity, while most medical data collected in the case series was unfortunately lost due to the bankruptcy of the company. Yet, they had the trial participants. And just to move a little bit forward, they do have part of the formula, and even so, let's flip back to the original supplemented data. You have to look at the preparation of the traditional Chinese medicine as well. And before I forget to, these were face-to-face -face video interviews of the people which were in the trial, which is important as far as maintaining the authenticity of the trial participants as well. And also if you look at the supplemented data, all identification factors of those patients is there uh, available to any of the researchers. Now, here is part of the data that I was able to get from the research per se, or I should say they printed. Now, I don't know if there's more to the formula or not. There were basically 13 different uh, herbs that were involved in this TCM. And then when you hear herbs and things like that, or traditional Chinese medicine, and a lot of, you know, uh, traditionally, I should say traditionally uh, trained Western doctors go, ooh, ah. But however though, outcome, outcome, that's all that matters is the outcome, regardless of the treatment. If it works, beautiful. And this is what it was. The TCM contained combined extracts from 13 different plants, including astragalus, skullcap, and ginseng, may have been lost all through the preparation of the TCM is in place. That's where we look at the supplement data. It actually goes into how they actually cooked it, per se, and uh, it's wonderfully laid out, just not all of the formula. And also, too, before I forget, because I want to make sure you can go to the DOI so you can look at it on your own. You don't have to trust me or believe anything I say, but the access to the data is more important than basically my presentation of it. So the DOI, citation, everything else like that is available to you. I would have thought something would have been done by now. I apologize for the delay. I figured the research that was being released was pretty groundbreaking, but unfortunately, there's always a little bit of a delay or sometimes a total disconnect between wonderful medical science and medical industry itself. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel signing off. I hope you find this information at least intriguing. Uh, something to grab hold and onto, and hopefully someone follows through and solves this mystery. Thank you very much. See you all again next week. And, well, as always, thank you for listening. Catch you then. Bye.